Next VCR. We finished off with the G series. So now we're gonna have a look at D. I've only got one model in this range and it's the NVD48. Now I've got two of them and they're both the Panasonic version. This thing is digital. It has some digital features which are interesting and hopefully we get to try them out. Hopefully at least one of these here will work in some way. I got the service manual for it. it covers the D38, which I don't know what's different about that version. Maybe it will tell us in the features section. Got all the usual stuff. One month calendar, auto operation, super one touch time recording, high quality picture, lap counter, remote controller, scanner, auto voltage selector on the D38 model. I guess the D48 doesn't have that. Whereas everything else seems to be common to both. Slim design front loading system, so it should be using the G mechanism. Multifunction display, you can adjust the sharpness. Has digital special effects. The special digital picture effects can be enjoyed by using the remote controller. Oh, what? What? That means we can't do it without the remote. Oh, that's not fair. They don't have the remote. Uh, maybe I should go and look harder for the remotes. Oh, that's really annoying. Okay. Index search, intro scan, and reception of up to 32 TV channels. Let's think about the edit switch. When dubbing or copying from one video cassette to another, and receiving weak TV broadcasts from the tuner, the edit, edit switch should be set to the on position. I guess that gives a little boost to the signal. Yeah, so the remote has these extra buttons, I think. Digital function buttons. Sad, so that means we won't be able to try them unless we got the, the remote. So you can do picture in picture, and it has some locations, and I think you can put multiple on there. A quarter screen frame store, and a multi select. Index search, so it's put index marks in the tape so you can find things again. It intro scan where it will play a little bit of the of the program at each index. All these things that we've forgotten about now that you can just click a file on the computer or use a DVD or whatever people do these days. I guess it's been taken up by watching ads. So the adjustment procedure, I'm thinking this might be quite a similar thing inside to the G500 that we looked at on the last video. Adjustments, and block diagrams. The digital block diagram. The schematics and PCB layouts. Then again, it goes into the exploded views and then the pass list. All right, let's have a look at the actual thing. So similarly to the G500, it's got uh, a cover over most of the front of the machine. So the only things you get to do from the front here is the on standby button and this push open which opens the front and there we get all the VCR controls tracking no longer buttons it's knobs back to knobs good old knobs the tape controls edit switch the tuner controls clock and timer then search and counter controls, TV VTR selection, channel selection, and the one touch timer record functions. And that's it. That's all you get on the front. The digital stuff is reserved to remote only. That's annoying, and I'd forgotten about that. On the back, very similar to what we've seen on the other machines in, from the G series audio and video in and out with RCAs. There's an edit, a sync edit plug. That's new test signal, vertical lock, the RF in and out, and AC input, switching mode, power supply, which might blow up. Let's take the top off, see what's going on inside it. Oh, look at that. It's got that big shield thing, like what we saw on one of the other models. Then the main stuff finishes here. 
but then there's the extra things for the digital functions in this shielded box we'll have to have a look in there so is this like the was it the g30 i don't know what other model had this kind of shielding arrangement i think it was the g25 either the g30 or g40 yeah it still exists let's attach the power and see if it turns on yes that's good 1988 again promising stop it's a bit strange that that stops by itself after a while I don't know if that means there's something up with it let's connect the video out and see if it will play Seems like it. No. Yeah. They must what they must have some problem with something. Uh, maybe something's not being sensed correctly. A bit weird. Maybe that dodgy plug. You see it's another one that's got that really dodgy connected down there for attaching the mechanism strange I wonder if there's an easy way of working out what it's unhappy about it doesn't really tell you much no error codes or anything okay perhaps should we try the other machine to see if that works any more or less and then we'll decide to take one of them apart okay well this one has less screws done up on the cover only two of them which is not really a good sign it probably means that it's had some it's been already discounted as a good thing might have parts missing or something oh it's a lot dirtier inside mm, the power supply is dead in that I heard it not working when I plugged it in. Just made a yeah, yeah. That's a shame. Made a funny noise. Like, well, that will mean that the capacitors are ruined. So we could try swapping the power supplies between them and then see if this one works. The mechanism is quite a lot dirtier. It seems we got pretty lucky going through all those G series VCRs with the switch modes, and they seem to work. Let's have a look how easily the power supply can be removed. I think it's just three screws. And then a cable. Unplug. Yes, it'll be sad because the capacitors have gone bad in it. The usual story. So perhaps we'll get the power supply out of this one. And then we can just try that other one out to see what it does that up let's see yeah it comes on to be dead for other reasons though doesn't it so it made some noises try rebooting it the mechanism becomes active it tells it that there's a tape in if we try manually loading a tape in it just 
put one screw in to stop that from falling out so we can tip it up. Okay, well, let's take this one apart and have a look around. Oh, there's no red screw there. This whole thing comes out with some just those two screws. Anyway, let's take the bottom off and look in there and try loading the tape in manually and see if it will do anything. Probably won't. Okay, look at that. Good stuff. I think again, this the front panel, like the G500, is on multiple, multiple different pieces to remove. Let's see. Yeah, it's got a top piece, and then there's a separate bottom bit, which I wonder, would we need to take this off? Oh, we do. Yeah, the, the G500 was different because you could fold out the main boards without having to undo the front panel, but it looks like this is not like that because it's got this plastic bracket thing which goes between the front board and the main board so in that case we will have to take all the stuff off in order to get the main board open that's a bit of a hassle so this one has a, a less elaborate releasing mechanism for the front door it's just a little peg which pokes into there it doesn't have that nice retaining mechanism thing like the G500 had had to the screw to the the clip thing snapped off and then the spring was no longer able to work okay the front panel part is lifted up uh, we got to do some screws on the back where the RF connector is now we should be able to lift this up Yeah, the clip thing for the the clock just fell off anyway. Not very well retained. What is stopping it? Oh, yes, that's right. There's this other screw over here, which for some reason isn't red. And has caused problems in the past because I snapped the board when branching on that. I don't know why they don't make that one red. Okay, so we can clip in at the back. This seems... I guess the board's smaller. Okay, luckily it didn't rip that cable out from the mechanism. So that's the main board opened up, but the digital part... This special stuff over here, that's its own separate unit, which seems to connect by only a few wires. Guess we'll get this bracket thing out of the way too. Can't even see what's going on down there. We'll look at that in a moment, but yeah, we'll have a look at this board. So we've got the fairly usual stuff. The timer display board with the chip on the back for driving VFD IR receiver same as what we saw in the other machines then these dodgy easy to damage cables and connectors everywhere seems like this is the modern way of doing things modern-ish late 80s yes yeah, so if you pull those out they're very difficult to get back because the wires are pinned stranded wire that will bend easily and not want to go back into the right place it's off the main board there's several sub boards it says they're servo and slow so it's something to do with slow motion and servo heatsink there over the motor driver and then this will be the video stuff luminance chrominance some of these interesting hybrid ceramic module things then the tv tuner part over here and then rf modulator in there then over here that's the exciting stuff let's take that apart the digital section so, yeah these these other bits are just what we've 
seen many times before in other machines. Oops, this just got yoinked out. That's going to be exciting to put back together. Yeah, look at that. These horrible wires that just push into this thing. Yeah, it went back in. That's good. Guess we're putting this away again. Really no. This is the one that didn't work properly. So the digital section is connected up by two cables. That one's got three shielded wires and a couple of unshielded, and then this one over here with some unshielded wires. This will unplug those, and then we'll slide this thing out. Probably have to look in the service manual to find out what what is this. Oh, look at that! Many surface mount ICs on the back. It's got little corner retaining things. Oh, look at that! There's some corrosion there, probably from some electrolytic capacitors, and looks like it's in the audio section again because of the tunable choke thing there and that chip. Yeah, probably because they use the same capacitors. Okay, so that folds down. That would have been assembled as one piece uh, with those links across it and then gets snapped off by a little breakaway tab thingies. Okay, so what's in the box? Find an easy way of prying that thing open. Oh, look at that. Some ICs, main digital. Looks like some RAM and SIP packages. Probably the frame store. It's on this side. More good stuff. Uh, this one's going to be hard to get off. There's a resistor there. And that might be a fusible resistor for um, like the overload protection, I guess. Some kind of CPU-like thing there. A couple of surface mount parts. 74HC4066. Yeah, both of them. They've, these things here are being through wave soldered along with a bunch of surface mount stuff that's been glued down. A few little glue blobs out the sides of it. And yeah, wave solder of those. That's why that's on the 45 degree angle like that so that the solder can run down the pads and then peel off at the ends where there's scavenger pads and not um, bridge. Similarly, on those, there's bigger pads at the ends, so as it peels off the wave, the blob gets stuck on those larger pads at the end and not between the last two legs of the IC. Very good. And there's some leaded stuff from this side. Yeah, it looks like RAM. Remember that kind of RAM that you'd have on graphics cards back in the day? Very back in the day. All right, maybe this, if we look in here, it will tell us something about it. So, digital block diagram from tuner or line in video in, playback signal, then it's got a video out. So that's probably what the three shielded cables were there. So they get buffered and switched. Then there's a color decoder. Don't oh, yeah, look two memory ICs, which will be those IC nine thousand and three. Yeah, three and two. And look the digital converter, eight bit data, into that. Oh, that's a gate array, is it? That big thingy there gate array, so I guess it's got some firmware in it that makes that stuff work. And then I guess there's a digital to analog converter somewhere. Uh, so it's done in component. For Y, R minus Y, B minus Y, and luminance. Interesting. Seems like this would be a useful thing. So it's controlled by serial data. Serial data in and out, and a clock. 
So yeah, it won't be very useful unless you can decode that stuff. Yeah, so there's three digital to analog converters. I see five, six, seven. Yeah, so that's, that's those guys. And the analog to digital converter, ten. That thing. I don't know, are they anything special? That's an NEC D6951C. And then the other ones are MN65523A. Yeah, so it gets turned into component analog. Then there's a color encoder, which is on this board here, this bottom one. 9510. I see 10. Oh, it's one of these guys. That thing, a color encoder. There's quite a lot of bits and pieces going on there. Oh, well, there you go. That's the digital section. It's probably a schematic of it somewhere. Oh, that's probably going to be a bit more. Not going to give much more information than what we saw on the block diagram. Because it'll be big and sprawled out. There you go, is it on this sheet? Oh, there's the PCB layout for it. There's a schematic. Sub digital. Oh, yeah, and then it goes to main digital, which will be this one here. It's got those good RAM ICs, that gate array. Uh, then there's a microprocessor as another thing. Yeah, I guess that's that thing there. ADC. And various analog switches and things. And filters on the input. Yeah, all those things there. And on this side, it's the, the stuff that component to com composite converter stuff various sync things and then the pinout of there so uh yeah the it's a smaller connector the one with just four pins there that's the serial clock data and five volts then the main connector that's ee video ground video ground again then vv video so there's video is video out one of them's from the tape one of them from the tuner or the uh input then it's got digital 5 volts, regulated 12 volts, regulated 5 volts, and test. I think it puts the test signal in if there's no video signal, so you get an actual stable uh, thing, not just static from the tuner. Because it mentioned that in the somewhere in the instructions that we're looking at, that it said it would put the test signal in if your the, the TV is, or well, the area wasn't picking up anything, it's not tuned into anything. Okay. Uh, what we we're going to do is try loading the tape into this thing manually and then see if it will do something. If it will partake in anything. Don't really have much hope for that. Uh, yeah, we couldn't get that one. Wow. We didn't really try that. The other one doesn't play continually, so... It's probably not going to work if we can find the remote to show the digital things because it won't be running for long enough to actually activate them. But I can insert a picture from a long time ago when I did have one of these things running properly and was able to try out the digital features. Pretty sure there's another version of these that has hi-fi sound. I can't remember what the number is, but I don't have one either. Yeah, there's extra little middle bracket thing so that the PCB, the main board, can be shielded down to the enclosure through that. Okay, so we'll try getting this tape in. And uh, just by winding on the mechanism. Maybe the timing is screwed up on this one does look like that, doesn't it? Because it's loading... It's doing the half load there, but it hasn't even got the tape... The tape's not even in yet. 
So there's definitely something going on there. Ah, a little thing was clicked. Clicked. So the clutch wasn't engaging. It doesn't explain why. Why isn't it turning the, the loading mechanism? I don't know what's happening there. I don't know why it's not um, operating the loading mechanism. Let me take that out and just look at it. Uh, this one's got extra screws, isn't it, that we won't be able to get to. Because you got to... I don't know, I can see the red screw down there. But yeah, it's got a horrible cable also. Uh, no, I'm going to have to lift all this up again. So what's going on here? happened with this why doesn't it move the the rack there is this similar to what we saw in another machine that didn't seem to want to behave something's got out of place in it not sure what it is but something is jammed in that and that's caused I can't get the wire out there we go yeah, it's a horrible plug that's going to be hard to put back in. Yes, yeah, so I feel like something's jammed in here somewhere. Because this part here isn't moving. This this plate here. Do you know what that means? Did someone force a tape into it and ruin it? Will something come off? Something's broken? Something's pushing somewhere it shouldn't be? I don't know. I don't know why it's like that. But I think that means now that that's off, that this will go further. Yeah, see now it runs the whole eject part until it gets to the end. Just there. So then according to those instructions you wind it on one revolution, then you get the this and put the second tooth and line it up to the something hole and that. But, yeah, this doesn't work, so it's not going to be able to do that. Oh, so maybe this would work if we could get this to work and put it back in. Would work. I don't know what is not happening here. I will look at this for a little while and get back to you. Alright. Look, it's free now. I don't know what the problem was, but I pushed in here and that seems to have freed it up that's yeah so something must have been jammed in that area because it's all good now which means we should be able to put it back together if we can get that stupid wire back in okay so we got out the see okay so we got out don't start every sentence with so we need to find the instructions here. So, memorize the position of the marking hole and turn it so it's one rotation back and keep the position. Slide the cassette just a little. So we already rot rotated it back once. So now we've got to get the second tooth into the fifth hole from that marking or the one above the hole. So it's the, the gap, not the tooth. So line that up. Hole, gap, and and then we're going to pull on this. Uh, this might be still ruined. Why does it not want to go back? There we go. So the second doofy is there. Second tooth is lined up with that thing, which is going to go over the top of that. Let's get the wire out of the way. Now we're going to turn this over. Get it to go in there. Not ruining anything. There we go. I think that's us. 
I'll pull back these screws quickly before something moves. Okay, we'll try winding this forward a bit. Oh, that's good. Now we can put it back in the other screws. It is a bit strange that these holes here don't properly line up with the screws at all. This mechanism is so dirty. So many hairs and dust all over it. Okay, so now we've got to get these wires back in. Just get this all shoved down. Put this front panel board on just so that it's all nice. All nice and good. is under a post. There we go. Alright, let's plug this in and see what happens. That doesn't look... Oh no, that's alright. That's alright. Because it's just offset because it doesn't have the tape in it to undo the latch. Ah, but we can't control it because the controls are on the panel, which is not installed currently. Okay, the panel is installed. What? Oh, you can't plug it in live? Okay, we'll reboot it. Did I just destroy it by plugging in the control panel while the power was on? No? Hmm. Yeah, it's unhappy about something. I think the mode switch is ruined. I don't think I got the timing of it wrong because... It can do this fine. Yeah, that little arm for the half loading isn't coming back to the right position. I'm wondering... I think someone forced a tape out of this. And that's what broke it. I can't get that thing released without destroying it. To, um... Yeah, it's destroyed. The little clip. Okay, let's see. Uh, it's probably not in the right position, but... We can try it. I'm not really going to pursue this thing much more because it's yeah. I wonder why that's not right. Yeah, not sure on that. Well, it's doing better, but yeah, there must be something else not in proper alignment in the mechanism. That's unfortunate. I think we're going to leave it there because, yeah, I have not got hours to take this thing all apart and redo the whole mechanism right now. But, we've had an overview, a reasonable look at what a D48 is like inside and out. And, oh, yeah, if we could have got one of them up and running properly and, and I could find the remote, which is proving to be incredibly difficult for some reason, then this is what it would look like if we could access the digital functions. You can put freeze frames in that stay on the screen. Which is exciting, I don't know what you're supposed to use that for though, but yeah, it's a feature. I guess they were just trying new things, testing the market, and it probably didn't go very well because why would you want that? Maybe it's good for a classroom where you want to study a specific frame for a while. Guess that's what you could use it for. Anyway, hopefully that was an interesting look at the Panasonic or National NVD48 VCR with digital functions. See you next time.